you're going through. There's still glory coming. And it's coming after this. Clap your hands. Come on.
just keeps me going. On those days when I feel like giving up. Fire. you to already see yourself out of the storm. The clouds will move. It's time for you to smile again. tells us that if any two of us shall agree on anything on earth, that God will do it for us in heaven. And I know sometimes life has a way of knocking you down to the point where you can't even pray for yourself. But today, I want to agree with you that it's getting ready to get better. And right now, we are giving your problems an expiration date. And we're saying it's over. That you've been crying long enough. That you've been worried long enough. That you've been struggling long enough.
Good morning, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, let us magnify the Lord this morning. Let us stand to our feet and, and worship the Lord in this place on this morning because God has truly been good to us. We thank the Lord for yet another Sunday morning because this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad about it. So we want to lift our hands and our voice and just worship the Almighty God we, because truly he is worthy to be praised. God, we thank you that we got activities of our name. We thank you that we can open our voice and just praise your name. We thank you that you put the love and the joy down in our hearts and our souls on this morning because we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is the day. This is the day. And we're excited about the day that you have made, especially for us. So we're going to lift our voice and we're going to say thank you, Lord. We're going to say thank you. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. God, our Father, again, we just lift our voice unto you. And we just worship you on this morning. We thank you that you have spared us to be in this place one more time. Because we're going to come in with excitement this morning. We thank you that we got a voice to lift. We thank you that we got a tongue in our mouth just to praise your name. So for that, we are grateful. God, we ask that you forgive us of our many sins. We're going to come into this service worshiping you in songs, in preach word, in the reading of the scripture, in our prayers. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Now we were here for my praise team. Thank you, Lord. Come on and give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I will bless his holy name. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For he's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. Oh, bless the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Put them together for Jesus. Hallelujah, put them together for Jesus. Glory to his name, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, if you would get your hymnals this morning and we're gonna sing him 411, lift him up. Yeah. Hallelujah, hey, Jesus. Glory. glory to God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to God. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer. Jesus gave the key, and now if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Second verse, oh the world is hungry for the living bread, let the Savior up for them to see. Try
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, for touching and waking yeah. us up this morning. We just want to thank you for giving us the activity of our lungs. Lord, we just want to thank, thank you, Lord. you for giving us safe traveling yeah. mercies. We just want to thank you for having open doors in this meeting place. We just want to thank you for the Holy Spirit meeting us here, preceding us here, and welcoming us into this sanctuary, God. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our God. We thank Hallelujah. You for being our Father. We thank you for being our provider, our protector. We thank you for being our master, yeah, Lord. our Savior, yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. our Lord, and yeah, Lord. our God. We thank you for all that you have done, for all that you are going to hey, do. Glory. We thank you for the good things, God. We thank you even for the adversity. Thank you, Lord. Because it was thank those you. adversities that draw us closer to you, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you. God, thank we you. ask for nothing just that you empty us of ourselves. Hallelujah. For you, God, we desire to be so close Thank to you, Lord. You, Thank you. Not even a breath of air can come between us. We want to be so close that we oh, hear Lord. the Thank whisper you, Lord. that is Thank in you, our Lord. heart. We are waiting for your charging mm -hmm. orders, and so we ask that you first forgive us for everything that we have done that is unholy. Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Make us holy. Make mm -hmm. us acceptable. Yeah. Allow us to be the living sacrifice. That you desire for us to be Hallelujah, God. Lord. That you anoint the word that has been yeah, prepared. Yeah, yeah. Anoint the ears that are waiting with tinsel expectation for our charging orders. And then we pray that all that we say, all that we do, is to the glory of Hallelujah. In the precious name of your son Jesus that we do pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Hey, Lord. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment. put our hands together one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this morning the choir let us know that the Lord is our joy and our strength 
and it's still ringing in this place on this morning because the Lord is our joy and he is our strength because when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us our soul cries out this morning hallelujah, hallelujah. God we realize hallelujah. that you are our joy we realize that you are our strength we can't do nothing without you so we just gonna raise our hand and say God I thank you God I love you God I worship you on this morning Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for yet another day. Yes, yes. We want to welcome each and every one that's with us this morning in the sanctuary. We thank God for you. We ask that you will continue to be in prayer as we go through the service. On this morning, Elder Elvis blessed us this morning. Amen. Amen. She led us off this morning. We thank God for her. We want to welcome each and every visitor that's in the place this morning. Before we go into Father, we want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. We want to say Happy Father's Day to us. Amen. We thank God for, I guess, the uh, the women, or the mothers, the women, the is responsible for giving us these pins, these pendants All that we right, have on our coast you, this morning. Represent royalties and wealth. All right, Amen. Amen. The purple. Uh, we thank God for you all for rem remembering us on this day. A uh, few announcements. We still accepting pledges from uh, the church anniversary. We're still accepting pledges for that of $200. You can see the ushers, I mean, see the, uh, the uh, treasure, the trustees and to give your pledge and we're also still accepting the mortgage uh, help to eliminate our mortgage of uh, I believe it was sixty dollars a month yes yes yeah, sixty dollars a month we still can see the uh, the trustees with that this coming Thursday um, at 715 the men will have choir rehearsal this coming Thursday um, so we need to be here for choir rehearsal this morning, this morning, our very own Elder Mason will be bringing forth the message on this morning. We thank God for Elder Mason who has been standing in the gap. He and Bishop has been blessing us mightily with that message, been intertwining together. We thank God for the Holy Spirit who is working Amen. on our behalf. Also, we want to uh, remember, continue to support our uh, Saturday uh, Bible study at 10 o'clock. From 10 to 12, we ask that each and every member and visitors, you are more than welcome to come and be in with our Bible study, which should be led by Bishop Ross. Um, and that's all I have. I think Bishop Ross have an announcement he want to make. Thank you, Al Gilchrist. And good morning to each and every one of you. Morning, and Bishop. happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Thank you. Thank you. I thank think you. we ought to give the father a hand of appreciation. Thank you. A job well done. And we're also sending out a caution uh, for those fathers who want to take it a step further. We're asking that you be mindful of the fact that the, those wife beaters, don't put those on this day. Uh oh, <laughs> too late, too late. Yeah. <laughs> I've already too been late, cautioned <laughs> um, by one of the wives about one of our officers who got up this morning and told her that he was the king and he wanted to be treated like a king and sent out several other warnings, but I think. He, that brother better be careful because <laughs> he goes to, sleep, goes to sleep much faster than his wife does. <laughs> so we'll ask him to kind of temper those uh, warnings down. Uh, in, all, in all seriousness, we're so happy to see uh, Deacon uh, Battle in the house this morning. He has been hey, uh, uh, going through something, and he's still got some more to go through. 
but he's still holding oh, yeah, on. Yeah. He's still yeah. soliciting your prayers, yeah. and he still yeah. believes in yeah. God. Love you. He Love still you. believes that God is in the healing business. And I'm asking you that you would be mindful of him and uh, think about him as he thinks about us. Amen. He Amen. is the chairperson of the men's ministry. Yeah. He loves the men's ministry. He has his heart and soul in the men, men's ministry. But you let him down at the last meeting. Uh, nobody showed up for the last men's meeting. And he was heartbroken by that, mm -hmm. so much so, until he reported you to me. Oh, my, <laughs> my, 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 Troy. Yeah. And he told me to tell y'all <laughs> something that I can only tell you on the parking lot. <laughs> no, yeah, but he man. wants you to be uh, uh, sure that you make your next meeting. Uh, That's this Saturday, am I right? This, this Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. this Saturday morning, all the members of the men's media, uh, ministry, he's asking that you be here uh, at 9 a.m. for your meeting. Now, you know, some things the Lord asks you to do and some he commands you to do. Uh -huh. Now, you can take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> but he is hot broken mm. because uh, nobody showed up mm. for the last meeting. Right, he right, will right. not be here. He has another uh, appointment with his doctor, but he's asking all the men, please men, please sirs, mm. be here next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for the men's ministry meeting, mm. business of importance. Mm. We uh, are are going to be here. If you're going to be here, give God a hand. Praise. All right. Be here and make his heart glad. Thank you so very much. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Ross, for reminding us that we need to be on our duty. I uh, also want to recognize that I uh, see Minister Beasley in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. And uh, I miss Brother Terry and, and Sister Sylvia. I miss you all the last couple of Sundays. And then you walk in this morning. Good to see you all. Amen. God bless you. And I also want to, this morning, I wish uh, one of our beloved brothers a happy birthday. I told his age, but I won't tell it this, this, this service. I want to wish Minister White a happy birthday. On Friday, he celebrated his birthday. Saturday. Amen. Bless your heart. Amen. Now we will hear from the choir, and after the choir, we will hear uh, from Elder Mason as he brings God's words to us this morning. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise
this way. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God.
God bless you. tried to be busy, but we're not going to give him no credit. I don't even know why he tried to show up, but anyway. I know I'm not much. I feel so unworthy. I'll never be much. Until the hand of God touches me, I've been praying, I've been praying that the Lord would touch me. been times I've been confused I didn't know just what to do but Jesus heard my cry he heard my plea he stopped by to rescue me I love you Jesus I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. My God reigns. My God reigns. He reigns forever. My God reigns, my God reigns, he reigns forever. He reigns forever, he reigns forever, he reigns forever and evermore. He reigns forever, he reigns forever, he reigns forever and evermore. Every praise is 
to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God our Savior, God our healer, God our deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a healer, God, our deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you. Come on and give God your best praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, I say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. If God has done something for you, I dare you to give God your best praise. You ain't got it yet. God could have left you on the back end. But God woke you up this morning, started you on your way, clothed you in your right mind. And for that, we are grateful and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Come on, give God your best praise. He's worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I should have been dead a long time ago. I should have been sleeping in my grave a long time ago. I should have been locked up a long time ago, but God saw me and saved me, healed me and set me free. And so today I got to give God my best praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Come on, give God your best praise because he's worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. Certainly it is a wonderful day today where we get to celebrate not just our earthly fathers, but our heavenly father. Amen. And so I honor God on this morning to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Certainly under this dispensation of the Holy Spirit, I greet you with the joy of Jesus. Amen. I honor today Bishop Ross. I thank God for you. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise certainly to his wonderful wife, Dr. W. Ross, and to, amen, to Elder Gilchrist and Elder Evans. I thank God for your ministry, amen, and to all of our technicians and musicians, all of your ushers, deacons, all of you, so I won't miss nobody. I thank God for you, amen. Amen. Certainly, this is a wonderful occasion. I see so many of my family members here today. I'm not going to call out your names. Amen. Several of my best friends are here today. I see you. I don't want to call out your name because I know how you guys are. Don't put me on, 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 on the screen. Don't put me up in front of nobody. So I'm just going to say I see you and I thank God for you being here. Certainly my father is here. I thank God for him. He, amen. 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 He's only heard me preach funerals, so now he get to hear his son preach the gospel amen. according to Jesus Christ and certainly to my wonderful cousins and my nieces and nephews and my, my 
my brother is here. That's it. I'm gonna leave that alone. It's my God, daughters, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. We're gonna get to the Word of God found in Genesis, the chapter, third chapter. Genesis, the third chapter. We thank God for this brother here in the front. Um, our, all of our visitors, we thank God for you. Bless you. Amen. We thank you for coming our way. Amen. Genesis, the third chapter, starting at the eighth verse. When you have it, say amen. Amen. We'll wait for those of you who need the table of contents. Genesis chapter 3. And there you'll find these words. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The verse that I want to pay close attention to is, is this ninth verse. And it says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where art thou? Here is the reading of God's word thus far. You may be seated. Just for a little while, I want to speak to you from the thought, the case of the missing man. The case of the missing man. Genesis is a book of beginnings, a tremendous statement of the power, glory, majesty, and grandeur of God. It is believed that the book was likely written by Moses to the Israelites as they were poised on the border of the promised land, preparing for battle. I thank God for my wife. I don't want to leave that out. She's here. Amen. <laughs> I'll hear about that on the car ride. And so the Israelites needed to feel God's power, his essence, and his guidance if they were going to make it through their battle. Genesis communicated God's power to them, giving them hope, security, confidence, tenacity, and power from within. When we look at Genesis, we learn a great deal about God, how he works, and how there is nothing that exists without the creativity of God and his abilities to cause things to live by present, be present, and breathe by his spirit when he speaks. When we look at Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, we see the powerful word of God when he creates the heavens and the earth. We see how God begins to speak and things begin to come into existence. He spoke in the physical world, the water, sky, earth, plants, and animals, were spoken into existence. And that's how our material world was created. And God marveled at it and said it was good. But when it came to humanity, we find that God creates humanity in a way that is very different from the way God created the physical world. He created humanity in his own image. The Bible says, then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. In Genesis 1, God created by speaking the physical world into existence. However, in Genesis 2, we find God creating humanity through a very different means, he started breathing his spirit into clay-molded people by him and designed to carry his spirit. The term breathe in, in Hebrew can also be translated as spirit. God does not merely speak humanity into existence, but actually forms the human and breathes life into his nostrils. 
God was great intentionally in his acts. God breathes God's spirit into humanity in a way that separates us from animals and God's other creations, which God speaks into existence. And when he created man, he created him with the intentions that man would sustain his relationship with him and that man would be that caretaker of God's world and that man would be the leader that he has called him to be and to understand the importance of his position in life and to understand that God has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of the hand, thy hands. Thou hast put all things under man's feet, all sheep and oxen, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. God placed man in charge and he was supposed to conduct himself in a manner that reverenced God and gave honor to him. But when we come to Genesis chapter 3, we see how sin came into the world and it pushed man out of his position and the things had begun to change. Things had begun to go on a down spiral. Man had removed himself from where God had placed him. And he has found himself out of line with the will of God. And that's why we have two women raising children, single mothers raising sons when, who need a man in their lives. And that's why we have children going astray because man has fallen because of disobedience and he has been replaced with something that wasn't in the original plan of God. And this has caused disruption throughout humanity because man had decided to go against the plan that God had for his life. In Genesis chapter 3, we see the greatest disaster to happen in the human race. We see that how by one man's disobedience, sin enters the world and we even see the effects of that sin in 2023. So as we begin to study the condition of today's world, and the societies that we live, it is often that we come to grips that there is something of high importance that is missing in and throughout our communities. In communities devastated by despair, desperation and dysfunction, where our children are having children of their own that they are not equipped to raise or support. They're joining gangs. They're getting involved in criminal activity. They're becoming lovers of themselves. They're becoming hooked on drugs and alcohol. They're rebellious to authority. And that's why it's so easy for a young boy to kill and a young girl to carjack. And that's why it's, it has become so easy for children to disrespect their elders and move out at 12 just to live in the streets and to become affiliated with the lifestyle that is only overrun by evil. It's not just missing in our communities, but even in our local churches. It is very visible that there is a lack of men in the church. In fact, studies show that the typical U.S. congregation draws an adult crowd that's 61% female, 39% male, and on any given Sunday, there are 13 million more adult women than men in America's churches. It is said that, the, that, that almost 25% of married church-going women will worship without their husbands. 
Studies show that midweek activities often draw 70 to 80 percent female participants and that the majority of church employees are women. More than 90 percent of American men believe in God and five out of six call themselves Christians. But only two out of six attend church on a given Sunday. The average man accepts the reality of Jesus Christ but fails to see any value in going to church but would rather attend the football game and Sunday's birthday brunch. In other words, they believe in Jesus Christ that he suffered, died, and was buried and resurrected but yet they feel that coming to church does not help them in any way. And with the rise of social media outlets and systems that are geared towards waking people up, so to speak, men feel that they don't have to come to church because folk are telling them that the church is in them. Yes, the church is in you. But what governs the church, which is the word of God, tells you to forsake not the gathering of the saints. So they choose to run with what best fits their lifestyle and disregards what they deem a sacrifice to get up on a Sunday morning to come to church. Well, I don't know about you. I, I, I don't know what would drive a man to think that way. But all I can say is that man has lost his mind. Because every day the Lord wakes me up, clothed in my right mind. I, I may have a little bit of aches and pains, but God has been so good to me that when Sunday comes around, the only thing that I want to do is run to church and give God my best praise. Because I know that had it not been for the Lord, who was on my side. Had it not been for God who was providing for me and protecting me, I wouldn't be here today. I, I, I wouldn't be the father that I am today because had he not provided for me, had he not loved me, I would have been a deadbeat father like the rest of them. I would have been messed up a long time ago but thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. And I'm so glad that he didn't give up on me when I was in my mess. But he pulled me from my mess and made me a better man, a better father, a better person. And so, and so, Not only is this true about being a, about a man being missing, Bishop, but if you really look at our societies in the black communities, it seems as though the father has taken a seat and have become missing when it comes to maturity and raising children. And during times of unemployment, racial injustice, and instability within families that we are dealing with, when you have governors creating laws to kill off the black race, when you have ex-presidents who commit crimes but still have a voice, when you have children losing their lives to crime and incarceration, the need for fatherhood, especially black fatherhood, is greater than ever. Millions of children across America live in households without a physically present father. And millions more live in a household with emotionally absent fathers. But why is this? According to fathers.com, 57% of black children, 31% of Hispanic children, and 20% of white children live in homes absent of their biological fathers. 
The United States Census Bureau reports that one in four children across the country live without a biological step or adoptive father in the home. Children without fathers are four times more likely to be impoverished, seven times more likely to experience teen pregnancy, have a greater likelihood of behavioral issues, are more likely to commit crimes and be incarcerated and face a greater chance of abusing drugs and alcohol. We must understand that the role that a father plays in a child's life is critical to their identity and development. A father's involvement in a child's life from birth to adolescence and into young adulthood shapes how the child views themselves and the world around them. In other words, as long as the father is around doing what fathers do, and not just in the house, but active in their child's life, that child will find a way to model himself after his father and the actions that he sees from the father, and they will in turn govern their lives according to how they see their fathers because their training comes by being close to their fathers. Jesus would have never been able, as productive as he was had his father God not been active in his life. And my proof for that is in the word of God. When it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The disciples would have never been able to do some of the things that Jesus had taught them had they not hung around Jesus and his teachings. But because Jesus' disciples was so connected to him, even when they made a mistake, it was their relationship and closeness that allowed them to carry the gospel as they matured. And so it is very important that the father be involved and allows his actions to speak and that he train up his children in the way that they should go so that they don't fall prey to the streets and the enemy. But when you look at the makeup of our societies, there seems to be a lack of men who are responsible who, who, who are supportive, who are protectors, and who don't allow distractions to disrupt their focus of their children. Notice I didn't say fathers, because anybody can be a father. All they have to do is plant the seed, and their name is printed on the birth certificate. But when it comes to being a man, this means you are one that respects and honors your promises. A man is one who knows who he is and stands tall on his being. He makes his decisions and is bold enough to put them to action. He is confident, examines situations, ideas, things himself, and thinks of himself, uh, uh, has his own opinion. He will never run away from a situation. He's no coward. He's a man who will pull in efforts and fix things no matter how uncomfortable it makes him feel. He'll consider his children's needs over his and, will be, and, and, and he will be there to protect them, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. But when you look at all of the crime and the problems with our teenagers, it seems to me that the man, the father in their lives seems to be missing. And there is a plea on, the fa on this Father's Day asking the question, where art thou? Has the father left the scene? Has man become too engulfed in what the world has to offer and they have forgotten and ran out on their children? 
Even as I look around in the church, the men are missing. The men are gone. And God is asking, where art thou? The mothers are here. The grandmothers are here. The aunts are here. And the sisters are here. But where are the fathers? Where are the men who are supposed to be the covering? Where are the men, the fathers who are supposed to lead their families spiritually? Where are thou? I know it's Father's Day and we have many men in here, but this is not how it looks on every Sunday. This is not the makeup of the church. So God is saying, men, where art thou? I can testify today that I did not grow up with a father in my house. My father was missing when I was young. And I grew up with a chip on my shoulder because it did something to me emotionally. When I saw most of my friends' fathers coming to their football games. And when I looked in the crowd, all I saw was my mother and no father. I watched how they got instructions from their fathers and I was left to deal with it on my own because my father wasn't there. And the only time he came around when he was impaired, the only time he came around was when things wasn't right with him. But I love the fact that he still came around. Regardless of what he was dealing with, he still showed up every once in a while. And so I had a father, but the man was missing because there was no protection, support, neither did I feel love. So it forced my hand and I started to rebel and find my way in the streets. All because there was no father in the home. So one must ask the question, where art thou? The question is still relevant in today's world. And it's still just as personal. I believe God still asks, where are, where are we? It is not a question in regards to your location because God already knows where you are because he is all knowing. But God wants to know just where you are in your walk with him. You see, when a referee asks a boxer when he has been knocked out and he gets up, the referee asks him, where are you? The referee knows where he is. But the ref wants to know what condition you're in. And so he asks the boxer, where are you? And so God is talking to all of the fathers today. He is saying, I know where you are. I know because I created you. I put that mind in you. I put that heart in you. And the blood that's running through you is my son's blood. But where are you? Where are you? Every now and again, we must check and examine ourselves to see just where we are spiritually. Because some of us are here physically, but mentally and spiritually, we are lost. This question is not for God's benefit. It is for our benefit. Sunday is a good day to continually ask and answer that question. It is already a day to separate ourselves from the world. So it is a natural time to meditate upon our relationship with the creator. All too often we find ourselves out of relationship with God. This has caused us to suffer enormous casualties in and throughout our churches 
and in our families. Frontline soldiers, the men, are dropping out of battle mainly because we have not spotted the real enemy for who he is. And when it comes to being a father, we must understand who our enemy really is. Our enemy is not our wives. It's not our children. It's, it's not our uh, 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 friends and family. But the real enemy is Satan himself. You see, the Christian has three powerful enemies to face the world. The flesh and the devil. There is an area of satanic attack not often recognized, and that is in the area of the mind. Mm -hmm. Satan attacks the believer not so much through the world or the flesh, but through mental processes. The devil is uh, uh, out to try and destroy the minds of men. This destruction is not evidence in mental wards, but by Christians who were once frontline soldiers for Christ, but now have become spiritual dropouts. Where are that? It is nearly impossible to find a church without those who were once deacons, Sunday school teachers, and faithful soldiers of the cross, but who no longer function. They simply became bitter in battle. They lost the battle for their mind. It is here that we must understand that this great fall away of men is not due to what the world has to offer them, but because man has lost the battle of his mind. Now, when it comes to fathers, since this is Father's Day, and I know you want a Father's Day message, we must understand that Satan attacks the mind of the father in hopes that he would become a deadbeat and one who does not know his identity as father. So he put thoughts in your mind in hopes that he would knock you off course. And when he succeeds, it not only affects you, but it affects your whole family. Because now the family tree is out of order because the father has allowed Satan to take control of his mind. But what we must understand as fathers is that we are defined by who we are in Christ. Not what we do or fail to do for Christ. Christ defines who we are by who he is and what he's done for us, in us, and through us. Understanding this information is the key to your transformation. When you know who you are, you know how to live. Only if your identity is rooted in your relationship with God above the ever-changing circumstances of your life can your identity be life-proof and get you through any and every situation. Satan declares war on our identity because he knows it is perhaps the surest way to wreck not just the relationship we have with our children as father, but between us and God. And when our relationship with God is in shambles, then our life will follow suit and be in shambles as well. You see, Satan refused to accept his God-given identity and instead sought to form a new identity apart from God. This is us. Watch y'all. He tried this trick, this same trick with Jesus. Says Jesus spent 40 days being tempted by the devil. Then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, Satan was attacking Jesus' identity as the son of God. 
Just prior at Jesus' baptism, God the Father said, you are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. But for some reason, it seems to me that just like Adam in the garden, fathers have taken the bait from Satan and has fallen prey to the enemy. And that's why the question of today is where art thou? It's time that the fathers come out of hiding because your children need you. Your communities need you. Your churches need you. And until the father get back in his rightful position, our families will always be under attack because the covering is missing. The text says the serpent was clever, more clever than any wild animal God had made. Spoke to the woman, do I understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, not at all. We can eat from the trees in the garden. It's only about the tree in the middle of the garden that God said don't eat from it. Don't even touch it or you'll die. The serpent told the woman, come on, man, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from that tree, you'll see what's really going on. You'll be just like God, knowing everything, ranging all the way from good and evil. You see, the first thing Satan attacks is your mind. And the reason why many men fathers are missing is because Satan has taken control of their minds. Satan knows that if he can mess up your mind, then he can make you follow him instead of following God. I'm a firm believer that whatever has control over your mind, has control over you. And we have to get to a place where we govern ourselves and let this mind be in Jesus, be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so Satan, he tries to attack the man, the father, who is the head of the household. I don't know about you, but if you look at the news and you look at things, when the father is messed up, when the father not dead, that family struggles more. That family goes through more depression and loneliness because their covering is missing. And, it's, and you have to understand just why God put man over as the cover. Because for one, he's supposed to be the protector and the provider. But somehow man has lost his mind and allow Satan to take control of his mind, and that's why children can go on the bus, click a gun three times in hopes that they'll kill somebody because there is no covering. And once Satan has grabbed your mind, this leads you into a state of fear. I got to get out of your way because I know you're waiting for that big piece of chicken. This is our time, Deacon Rob Webb. We get the big piece of chicken, man. I'm telling you. One of the biggest threats to mankind is fear because it will cause you to go into depression. It will cause you to live a life of seclusion, and nine times out of ten, you will find yourselves broken. And with that same fear, just like Adam, it will cause many to run into hiding. Fear itself is often complex and unpredictable. It can cause people to do things they think they would never do. Fear can distort a person's thinking so that they believe they are taking the right action. Fathers who struggle with anger or who have been abused in their past might be terrified that they'll abuse or traumatize their child in the same manner they might be thinking. 
I'll just mess up my kids the same way my dad messed me up. Fathers might be afraid of letting their kids down. That, that, that there's nothing they can do to live up to the world's expectation. And that's where they, 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 they are wrong because I don't want to live up to the world's expectation. I want to live up to the expectations of God. Fear of failure or harm can drive fathers to leave out uh, a misguided sense of protecting their children. But God does not want us to be fearful because he didn't give us the spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. And regardless of what life deals us, we should have sense to know that if God put us in it, then he is well able to bring us out of it. And so here in our text, as I get out of your way, we find Adam and Eve plunged into their first despair. Previous to this, they had known no sin, no fear, no shame. And yet in the eighth verse, we find that they, 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 they so filled with fear that they are hiding from the presence of God. What a terrible experience to pass from paradise itself to a state of depravity, shame, and fear. But as I get out of your way, the Bible says that God came in the cool of the day. In other words, God was in pursuit of Adam, just like he is in pursuit of you today. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Many men today have gone into hiding. One of the reasons why man has gone into hiding is because they are afraid of taking responsibility for their wrongdoings. So we must understand that God is on a mission. He's calling men to come out from high. And so as I go to my seat, we as fathers have to model our lives like God the Father. We have to have such a relationship with our children like he had with his son Jesus Christ. We can't go missing just because our children have gotten in a little bit of trouble. We can't go missing just because we made a mistake when we laid down with the wrong person. We can't go missing when the finances get low and the bills are due. We can't go missing when the weight of the world is pushing us around and things just don't seem like they are getting better. But we have to stay in our place as men. We have to stay in our place as fathers. We have to stay grounded and we have to not just maintain our relationship with our children, but we have to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I got to go, y'all, because the chicken is hot. But the Bible says in John 5, 19, therefore Jesus answered and saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in man. In other words, father, you have to have such a relationship with your sons and your daughters that the things that they see you do, they will want to do them also. I just came back today to encourage the fathers that if you love your children, 
then they will know how to love others. Fathers, if you protect your children, then they will learn how to protect those who they love. Fathers, if you provide for your children, then your children won't have to go out and rob, cheat, and steal just to get back. But because you showed them that you are a provider, then they will work just like you. Fathers, if you cover your family, then your children, when they are grown, will know how to cover their own families. Because just like Jesus, your children will only do the things that they see you do. Can I be transparent for a minute? I saw my father abuse alcohol, so that made me want to become an alcoholic. I saw my father have relationships with several women, and I thought that that was right thing to do because I wanted to do the same. And it was not because that was my desire, but it was because that's what I saw and I wanted to resemble my father's actions. Lord have mercy, but I thank God, I thank God that I didn't allow the things that I learned to destroy me because one day I looked up for my father and I was asking the same question, where art thou? Where are your father? Where are you, man? I've been looking for you all my teenage years, and I'm still, I love you to death. I honor you on this morning, but where are you? I found out that I found another father that's everlasting who is the father of lights, the father of mercies, who always shows me compassion, the father of glory, who always deserve praise, the holy father, the righteous father, the living father, and the father who sent his only begotten son. I, I know I messed up along the way, and I know I didn't dot every eye, and I didn't cross every T, but God looked down, and he saw that mess, and he sent his only begotten son to die for me, because I couldn't do it for myself. But Jesus, Jesus paid it all. And to all him I owe. I have a relationship with God the Father. It's easy for me to love because I see how he loves me. It's easy for me to take responsibility because I see how he forgives me. It's easy for me to provide because I see how he provides for me every day. And all I came by today to do and to tell you is to the fathers that God is all that we need. He knows where you are, but today he's asking, are you in your right mind? What's the condition of your heart? If we are going to do anything and cause a difference in the world, us men have to take back our rightful position. And so I thank God that he's raising up men who don't mind honoring him who don't mind going out into the highways and the byways telling somebody about Jesus. And I thank God for that. So I'm asking all the fathers, where art thou? A wonderful testimony as I take my seat. Although my father wasn't there for me when I was young, Later on in life, we became father and son. 
Yeah. And I just take it that God had a plan and a purpose for him not being there. I had to go through my own struggles and learn how to be a man and make better decisions for myself. But I thank God that he placed my father in my life because I wouldn't be the man that I am today. My father has taught me many things. How he even taught me how to build a house, how to fix things. And I make sure that I call him at least once a week because of my busy schedule. And I thank God for him. And he's here today. And I honor you today. And I thank God for you. Because you are a special man. And you are special to my heart. So I thank God for you. Eyes have not seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of them. But great things that God has in store for me and you. He's been promising me that he was coming to church for a long time. And I thank God for his, his life because he's been going through his battles with cancer and health issues. And God has sustained him and he looked good. I can honestly say he don't look like what he's been through. But he's a man of God. He know who God is. And he know who to pray to. And so I just want to honor him. The Bible says, honor your yeah. mother and your father. Yeah. And so today... I just want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers and men. Go be great. Amen. Let's bless the Lord for the message and the messenger. Amen. Hallelujah. Elder Mason, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that great message. The door of this church is open. Will there be one in our midst this morning who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? I extend the invitation to you this morning. You can come a candidate for baptism, backslider being reclaimed. You can come as a, as a transfer on your Christian experience. All we want you to do is come, not join, Douglas Street, for New Smyrna. We want you to join and be in cahoots with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who paid with his son life for your sins and mine. And all he asked said that we would come unto him. So will there be one in the house this morning? Will there be one? He will give you brand Hallelujah. new life. Hallelujah. He will give you brand new life. New life above. That's it. That's it. Oh, come. Why don't you come this morning? Why don't you come? Come on. Oh, to cry. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. All of these is mine, said the Lord. Let's bless the Lord one more time for the presence of Almighty God. The presence. Almighty God. You may take your seat before we head out. I've, we still Baptist. I forgot to take the offering. So we are asked the uh, ushers to pass the plate. The deacon will come and stand before us. Get your love offering, your offerings in your hand. There is an a, a envelope mark love offering that goes directly to Bishop Ross. We ask that we will be a blessing to him and that we will bless and we'll do what we're required to do, pay our tithes and offering as you'll give us some giving music and we will pass the basket.
Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh. praise and I'm so glad you're in my life and I'm so glad you came to save us oh Lord I lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praise So glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. All of my dead should pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high 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 lord i lift for you and want to participate in the giving. We pray that you will not go lacking in your giving. Amen. The altar is open. It's prayer time. As the songwriter states, for you I am praying. You can come bring your wants and wishes to the Lord for you. Dealing with any situation, the healer is here. The deliverer is here. So will there be one? You can come to the altar at this time. The altar is open. Amen. I will ask that Dr. Scott will lead us in another soft song. And I ask that Dr. Ross will come and lead us in, in our prayer this morning. So, will there be one that will come on and make your wants and wishes and petitions known unto the Lord? 
Amen. As Dr. Ross comes. Most holy and wise God, our Father, we come to you this morning with praise on our hearts and thanksgiving on our lips. We thank you that you are our God and our Father, that you watch over us as a hen watches over her chicks, that you draw us to you, Lord God, by your word. You draw us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you're searching the earth, looking for those who would serve you. We thank you, Lord God, that you didn't leave us out in the cold, but you brought us into this place this morning, that you didn't leave us where we are, Lord. When you search for us, when you cried out, where art thou, Lord? We answered the question. We came to tell you that we are here to serve you. We're here with you. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to stand before you this morning and say that we trust you, that we love you, that we believe in you, and that we give our lives for you. And we pray, Lord God, that you would hear our prayer this morning and that you would give us the desires of our hearts, that desires to worship you in the beauty of holiness. We desire, Lord God, to be vessels of righteousness. We desire to be vessels of peace. We desire, Lord God, to walk up right before you. We desire, Lord God, that all those things that we have done that have not been pleasing in your sight, Lord, that you would forgive us for them, Lord. Cleanse us of all right unrighteousness. Create in us clean hearts and right spirits that we may serve you. Create in us, Lord God, the spirit of humility. Cause us to walk in peace. Cause us to walk humbly before you, Lord God. Cause us to tear down strongholds in our lives and in the lives of others. Cause us to walk in unity, that there would be no division in you, for there is one God, one Lord, one God and Father of us all. We praise you this morning, Lord God, because you are not only our God, but you are our Father, you are our covering, and that it is you that we live and breathe and have our being. We praise you this morning, Lord God, because you are our Father and our God, but not only that, you are our healer and you are our deliverer. And all those things that the enemy has brought up against us to cause us to be in a purpose other than that which you have designed for us, we know, Lord God, that when we walk in the path that you have chosen for us, that we will walk in the path that you have for us, that we will come forth with pure as pure gold. We're still on the potter's wheel, but we're grateful, Lord God, that you got your hand on us. We're grateful, Lord God, that you have not forsaken us. We're grateful, Lord God, that you have not abandoned us. We're grateful, Lord God, that you have not got forgotten us. We're grateful, Lord God, that where we have stepped out of your will, that you waited for us to come right back in, Lord God, and you didn't cause us, Lord God, to have to beg and plead, but you received us with open arms and with loving care. We're grateful, Lord God, that you didn't hold those things over us, Lord God, but you don't cause us to walk in guilt, and we can walk in freedom because you are God and God alone. We're grateful, Lord God, that the joy of the Lord is truly our strength, and our strength is in you. And as you strengthen us, Lord God, we can reach back and strengthen our brothers. We're grateful, Holy Father, that not only are you our strength, you are our peace, Lord God. We have peace in our bodies. We have peace with one another. We have peace with you, and we're grateful, Lord God, that you're tearing down the strongholds that Satan has built up in this world, in this state, in the United States of America. We're grateful, Lord God, that you're tearing down that spirit of pride, of arrogance, of self-will. And we're grateful, Holy Father, that you're causing us, Lord God, to see as you see. We're grateful, Lord God, that the world has not 
the world has not honored you, but we honor you. And we're grateful, Lord God, that you have given us the task to pray. And if we would pray, seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, and you will forgive our sins, and you will heal the land. We're calling for healing of our land this morning, Lord God. Healing for our children. Healing for the generation to come. We're calling, Lord God, for you to raise up a generation of children who will worship you in the beauty of holiness. We know, Lord God, that there is one who's coming after this one. And we're grateful, Lord God, that you will cause us to reach back, Lord God, and to help them as they come forth with zeal and they come forth with zest as they come forth with boldness and confidence to give you all glory, honor, and praise. We're grateful, Lord God, for the foundation that you have allowed us to stand on, but we're grateful, Lord God, for the foundation that we're leaving for them. For no greater foundation has been built than that of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So we're grateful this morning, Lord God, that you've given us an opportunity to play a part in the restoration of this, the United States of America. We're grateful, Lord God, that you're causing us to have a part to play in the restoration and the upbuilding of your church. We're grateful for every man and woman of God that you have called to preach the gospel simple, full, and free. We're grateful, Lord God, that you have called them and that you've sent them and that you've commissioned them. We're grateful that even before the foundation of the world, you had this day in your mind, Lord God, on your mind. And we're grateful that we have come this far by faith. Hallelujah. We've come this far by faith. And by faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. And as we continue to walk by faith, we will continue to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you so richly deserve. We're grateful, Lord God, that we can raise our hands and say, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're grateful this morning, Lord God, that we are your children and the sheep of your pasture. We're grateful this morning that we can call on the name of the Lord and you will tear down the strong. We're grateful this morning, Lord God, that we're not conforming to this world, but we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're grateful, Lord God, for our strength. We're grateful for our mind to serve you. We're grateful for a pastor who preaches the gospel simple, full, and free. We're grateful for our church to come to to worship you and you, Lord God. We're grateful, Lord God, for homes that you've given them, for cars that you've given us. We're grateful for our children, Lord God, that you kept them safe from molestation and rape and abuse. We're grateful this morning, God, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And so, Father, we ask you to hear our prayer, Lord God. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Incline your ear unto us, Lord God. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Cause us to walk up right before you, Father, as we shake off the shackles, as we tear down strongholds, and as we look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord. We're grateful this morning, Lord God, for God who looks, sits high and looks low, for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, and who resurrected on the third day and who is now interceding on our behalf. We're grateful this morning for all that you are and all that you are to be to us. We pray, Holy Father, that you this prayer, the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts are acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And it's in the precious name of Jesus the Christ that we pray with thanksgiving and all God's people said, Hallelujah! 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 Bless the name of our God! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Bless the name of our God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're grateful for these men who have come to the altar, Father. We're grateful for those who have come to the altar. We pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen them in their physical bodies, Lord God, in their spiritual lives, and even in their mental state. We're grateful, Lord God, for each and every one of them, and we thank you for their transparency and their willingness to show themselves to be men, holy men of God, who yield to you. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Go to your seat knowing that the Lord heard and answered your prayer. We thank God for this wonderful day. We pray that everyone has been blessed by the Lord this morning in this place. All hearts and minds are clear. We thank you again, Elder Mason, for yet a wonderful, wonderful message. Amen. You trying to get me?
Okay, it was one off. We're going to take that off. Yes. Okay, amen. Um, all hearts and minds are clear again. Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we ask that uh, we will be here for our Bible study from 10 to 12. Let's continue to pray for one another, keep each other in prayer. We ask that, uh, again, all Father, happy Father's Day to us and to you. Uh, all hearts and minds are clear. God, our Father, again, we thank you so much for this wonderful, blessed day that you have given.